So as I've said in previous videos, I've been studying a lot of these ancient Sumerian texts uh, mainly through YouTube videos because there's a number of channels that focus on this and some of the channels will actually uh, recite these, those texts and then there's some channels that obviously analyze the texts. I'll listen to both. Uh, there's several channels that are really good at what they do. Uh, the Fifth Kind TV, that's uh, Paul Wallace, he's very good. Uh, Billy Carson is, is also interesting to listen to and, uh, and some of the others that I've actually used in previous videos that are good that they're intelligent people that do good research not that I agree with it you know or some of it I agree with uh, it's difficult to it's difficult it beca it's becoming more and more difficult for me to not believe in a pre-Adamic age because of all the ancient manuscripts that are available and also common sense and let me explain what I mean by that uh, the Bible is a family book. It's, it's basically, it's the family of Jesus Christ. From Adam to the very last person on the earth, the human family that believes in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible is. It's a family story. It also includes evildoers, obviously, that belong to Satan. Uh, but for the most part, this is what God is sharing with us, his family, and how to live uprightly before him. And so when you have... The, the right perspective of the Bible, it becomes easy to believe in a pre-Adamic age because, uh, because it's, it's, when you look at God, God, had no, God has no beginning. God the Father, there's no beginning. And so, it, you know, it's, you wonder, what, what did God do for all of eternity before he made man on the earth? It, it just seems kind of illogical that he just did nothing. He probably created all sorts of beings, but when he created us, he created the human family in his image. That's what the Bible clearly teaches. And so when we see the wording in the Bible, in the beginning, it obviously does not mean in the beginning of God because he had no beginning. So in the beginning means the beginning of the human story. And so when you have that perspective, it makes it much easier to believe in a pre-Adamic age. And so so I've been studying these ancient texts, and I've got some serious issues with some of the things they say. Uh, like, for instance, Enlil and Anki and their dad, Anu, they're from Nibiru, the planet Nibiru, which makes a cycle, like, I think it's like every 3,600 years. And so it's not always passing Earth. Uh, that's why it's, like, elusive. A lot of people don't believe it exists. I don't really care if it does or doesn't exist, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, uh, but these characters, these beings, are, they're not, according to the text, they're not angels. They're, they're some kind of created being that God our Father created. And in those ancient texts, the Father is called the All-Creator. That's the language that's used. And, and we see in these ancient texts that Enlil and Anki, the sons, half-brothers, and sons of Anu, uh, or were well, the ones that seeded human life. They created human life. And uh, I got some issues with that, but it's, it's not really too big of a deal because there's some, some language that alludes to the fact that, that God used them. Like God the Father, the All-Creator, used them to create human life. Okay, so, sort of like how, like if I minister to healing, healing to somebody, I'm not claiming to be the healer. God used me. Jesus Christ uh, moved through me to heal somebody. And so I'm just a vessel. So it's, so it's kind of like that. You can look at it that way, that if indeed God used these beings that he created and gave a lot of understanding and high technology to, if he used them to create human life, uh, then okay, no big deal. But it, even Enlil and Anki acknowledge that that they were used. In fact, there's, there's one point in the text, in one of the Sumerian texts, where Enlo and Anki are talking with each other, and they're kind of like scratching their heads, so to speak, wondering if they were used by the old creator to do this, because they kind of had this attitude of, like, thinking more highly of themselves than they ought, like they're gods, and maybe they're gods uh, compared to human beings, because of the limitations that God purposely put on us, which I don't have a problem with, 
So they might be gods in that sense, but they're not anywhere near God the Father. In fact, there's a lot of uh, researchers that claim that Enlil is the Yahweh of the Old Testament, and I, I think that's just totally wrong, because they see they look they look at the passages in the Old Testament where Yahweh uh, is bringing judgment on evildoers, and they see and so these people that do this research see Yahweh as a vengeful, uh, wrathful God who is quick to want to destroy mankind, and that that kind of like lines up a little bit with the way Enlil's attitude is, like Enlil wanted to destroy mankind in the flood, and Enki, who sometimes is referred to as or or uh, as Satan, like some some of these people think that Enki was Satan, and that and so they flip it on its head. They they think that Enki wanted to save mankind, and that so in other words he would be the serpent in the garden, and it's like this. This is all speculation from these people, but they, when they say it, they make it sound like as if it's fact. That's why you've got to, you've got to research it yourself and see the, the, uh, the, 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 the mistakes these people make in analyzing these things. And here's one mistake, for instance. Uh, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's this one point where Enlil and Enki's dad, Anu, has a uh, a wrestling match with this guy named Alalu, who was supposedly the rightful king of Nibiru, and they Enlil, uh, Anu and Alalu have a naked wrestling match for the kingship of Nibiru, and a Anu wins, and he puts his foot, he gets Alalu down on the ground, and he, he wins, he, he pins his pins him on the ground with his foot, as like a symbol of he won, now he's the rightful king, and when he took his foot off. Uh, Alalu, in his rage, gets up and bites off his privy member, so to speak, if you know what I mean, his man, male, maleness, manhood. And, uh, and it, was, you know, it was very painful for Anu, obviously. And the guy, the guy bites off and swallows it. And then he's banished, uh, he's banished forever, I think, to either to Earth or some other planet. Yeah, some other planet uh, for doing that, for that crime. And, uh, and supposedly... Uh, his the privy member in his stomach uh, causes a disease, and he eventually dies from that. But uh, but the problem I have with Enlil and Enki being creators of mankind is that is that they weren't able to give their dad Anu a new privy member. They, they they helped to heal him, but they couldn't give him a new privy member. So like so like in other words in the old testament we see plenty of passages of god yahweh uh, speaking about how he is the creator of everything he's a loving compassionate god uh, and there's no other god besides him and this is not the kind of language that this is not the kind of description of enlo so they, so these the people that do these videos and and try to teach on this stuff they're deceiving a lot of people because they're they're pretty adamant in saying that Enlil was the Yahweh of the Old Testament, and it just doesn't line up. Uh, they couldn't even give their own dad a create a new privy member for him, <laughs> so he had to live the rest of his life with no no more heirs because he was missing that part of his body, and so it just doesn't add up, you know. And so there's a lot of deception. That's why you gotta you gotta look into this stuff yourself. You gotta read these texts or 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 listen to narrations of them. On YouTube so that you can find out for yourself because these people are fooling a lot of people and so and it's, it is it all it ultimately comes down to uh, the truth found in Jesus Christ uh, like in other words the people in this community that teach these things they're they're very much the same people in the community of of new age people that believe in Christ consciousness and and coming to a higher consciousness a higher level of consciousness and and these people are trying to do this in the body in this body this this body is not Jesus said this body does not you cannot this but the flesh and blood cannot inherit the king you know the kingdom of heaven and so but the people in this community in this new age community think that they're going to do it in this body they think that that through technology and a higher consciousness we can uh, get healing in a body and live longer and then come to this place of eternal life uh, that way and it's all futile and vain it's not going to happen you have to be a new creation that that's why 
That's why it doesn't make a difference what kind of alien DNA we have. If, if it is true that we are seeded by the Anunnaki from Nibiru, it matters nothing. It, it doesn't. It matters nothing because Jesus Christ, the whole purpose of Jesus is to make us a new creation where, where his DNA is put into us. We're in Jesus. Jesus is in us. And we've got his DNA, which is not ever going to be uh, corrupted by Anunnaki aliens. And so this is what these people miss. They, they don't understand it. They're blinded uh, because of the sin, because they resist the truth about who Jesus Christ is. Uh, they just see him as like an ascended master, which is total rubbish. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily in Jesus Christ. So the Father is in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is in Jesus Christ. And so you need to be in Jesus Christ. And these people don't get it. And, and, and so uh, they're not going to get, they're not going to make it because Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am who I say I am, you will indeed die in your sins. And so you have to know Jesus Christ based on who he really is, not an ascended master. That's not enough. You're going to end up in hell. Uh, there's no way to do it on your own. You must be in him. And then, and then sur submit to him daily and be quick to repent if you do happen to sin against him. And then he will keep you from perishing. He'll hold on to you forever and ever. He won't let you go. He's faithful. He's a great Savior. He's all you need. Jesus Christ is all you need. He will take care of you in every single way, all the days of your life, until it's time for you to go home. So, so uh, educate yourself on these ancient texts so that you can know where those who are teaching this stuff are not teaching accurately. So you can understand this and rightly divide uh, the Word of God and the truth of what's going on here and keep yourself from being deceived like many people are. So God bless you. Thanks for watching. And Jesus is Lord, Savior of the world. Amen.